This podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Your San Diego County Toyota dealers. We've got what it takes. Fix Auto. Corky's Pest Control. And Lolita's Family of Restaurants. Hey sports fans, Christian Pedersen, Coach David Ring. What do we get to talk about right now? Playoffs, baby. Not just playoffs, the Division I Finals. This game is going to be Friday, 7 p.m. USD. It is going to feature the Grossmont Foothillers taking on the Francis Parker Lances. I don't know why I say it like that. I just love saying the Lances. Um, not the game that everyone expected. Not the game that I had picked, not the game that you had picked. But honestly, this is a really fun game because this is a game of no real preconceived notions. This is not a game where it's like, oh, Grossmont has one pitcher who they've been riding or Francis Parker has one offensive weapon that they've been riding. It is a pair of actual teams. And that's what's fun about baseball is that you get in the playoffs, things start happening, one team beats another team, something else happens, a home run here, a strikeout there, and you wind up with this, which is the cream rising to the top in the form of Grossmont versus Francis Parker. Let's start on the Grossmont side of things. They come into this game 18 and 15 with a 7 and 5 mark in league. But yet we're talking about a team that this year beat East Lake in extras. They beat Cathedral Catholic. They beat Helix. They beat Granite Hills. So what did they do on the flip side of that? They just split a lot of series. So this is a team that we've seen a lot of really, really quality wins out of. What stands out to you about this Grossmont team? Well, you know I love Dave's dingers. You love the dingers. Chicks, Fif chicks do dig the long ball. 15 home runs for Grossmont. These guys have a way of swinging the momentum to their side, getting that big hit. Jaden Lombardo, Max Ford, Jackson Hewlett. It's the usual suspects for these guys. With all those big wins during the year, these guys are poised. And that's like you said, my favorite part of this year is this is the two hottest teams. Not necessarily who I thought was the hottest, but the two hottest teams coming in. I'm, I'm excited to watch this game. Absolutely. Another player to highlight for Grossmont is Noah Levin. And like you said, this is a team that can hit, 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 hit. So looking at a lot of deep, loud outs right. going to be made. I know you got to make all 21 outs to get to the end of that game, but even if win or lose, I feel like Grossmont is going to just going to have a lot of people going, whoa, <laughs> as balls get hit deep into the night because this is getting played Friday, 7 p.m., USD. Got to keep saying that to you so you, you, you remember it. On the other side, Francis Parker. 22-7 and seven on the season. Coming into this one, riding the momentum of having they played an extra game they, than, uh, than Grossmont, but that game ended with an Ethan Rissy home run in the sixth to give them a lead or to give them a win. Sterling Hayes pitched a great game. So, you know, still talking about home runs, still talking about big pitching. Is there anything that differentiates Francis Parker? What, what do you see from the Lancers? Francis Parker's got some pitchers left. They burned Sterling Hayes last game, who was definitely a strong pitcher. They've got Rissy and Chatfield left. They'll probably throw Chatfield on the mound. Maybe Rissy. Maybe Rissy. You know, that's the problem with this is we don't have those probable reports like they get in Major League reporting. <laughs> it's definitely going to give Grossmont a tough time. Like I said, Parker's playing the tough, the, the hot hand right now, and, and they can't lose. Every game that they're playing is tight. It seems to everything be going their way right now. A couple other players for Francis Parker that you absolutely got to look for is Ben Krongard and Nick Allen. Uh, maybe not quite in the same category as each other, but you know, Nick Allen, future pro, future successful long term player. Ben Krongard, still a big time part of this team getting to the finals. It kind of seems like these guys have an equal set of resume, just, just a different group of teams. Mm -hmm. They beat Montgomery. They beat Country Day. They beat Scripps, common opponent. They both beat Granite Hills. So, you know, it, it's, it's getting really hard to kind of, one team has home runs, oh, well, the other team just won a game with three home runs. One team has big wins, well, the other team also has some pretty big wins. I'm going to say this one comes down to defense. Who can turn double plays? 
who can prevent runners from getting in scoring position? Because once we get runners in scoring position, both of these teams are excellent at bringing them home. Like you said, deep balls, home run balls. But also that means fly ball outs. That means sack flies, score runs. If you can get that guy to second, you know, bunt him over, something like that, yep. runs are going to come at a premium in this one. So I'm thinking that it really comes down to who is going to capitalize off of, not necessarily maybe an error, but who's going to capitalize off of that one walk mm -hmm. or that one ball in the gap or that one, you know, 5.5 hole shortstop doesn't quite get to it, so runners at first and third now instead of first, something like that. I think that we're going to see a game that features a lot of kids swinging really hard early on. We saw that with the, the, the Parker Granite Hills game. The first five outs from Granite Hills were all fly balls to the warning track. <clears throat> Sterling Hayes settles in. I, I would be surprised if we didn't see the same thing from Grossmont. They come out swinging really hard, but then eventually they're just not able to get it done. That's why I'm saying Francis Parker is going to get this win. And Jackson Hewlett will be on the mound for Grossmont. And this guy does a great job of limiting runs, keeping runners off the bases. And if they get on base, they're definitely not moving around that much. So it's time for picks, and I'm going to take... Grossmont. Oh, we got a split decision. Grossmont playing the tough, a really tough team, and Francis Parker, nothing against you guys. Lots of studs. I would say Francis Parker, on paper, has a team with some of the top players in the county, and, you know, we haven't given them enough credit this year. I just think that Grossmont team is poised to win a championship this year. So You know, that's why you take the paper and you do this and you just throw it out because you got to actually play the championship game. You got to actually see who's going to get out there and come up with a big yeah. moment. In a few days, somebody is going to be a hero. Someone's going to be stamped into immortality as being the reason that either Grossmont or Francis Parker has a Division I baseball championship banner hanging at their school. Folks, come check this game out. We will be there with all the coverage you need of it, and we'll see you in the postseason to, uh, to, settle, to, to settle all this up and move on to another year of baseball. Thank you very much, sports fans. We will see you soon.